It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Edward P. Morgan and Daniel Shore, both of the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Edward W. Barrett, former Assistant Secretary of State. Mr. Barrett, we want to ask you some questions tonight about propaganda and our information services abroad. We all know that as Assistant Secretary of State, you had that responsibility in running that show and uh, I must warn you that uh, Dan Shore and I have uh, read your book, Truth is Our Weapon, uh, not only for enlightenment, but uh, to try to throw you, if we can, a curve or two. Before we get into the, uh, to the body of the uh, subject, uh, this word propaganda seems to bother a lot of Americans. Uh, we dislike the word. Uh, why is it necessary to spend a lot of money, millions of dollars, propagandizing ourselves abroad? First, let me say I'm delighted that you've read the book. I hope you bought the book, too, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you are going to throw some curves. We allow you that plug. <laughs> um, why is it necessary uh, to carry on propaganda, you say? I recognize, as you do, that the American people have an inherent distaste for the idea of propaganda, partly because they don't realize that we're talking about truthful propaganda, international persuasion, as I call it. Why is it necessary, I think, for the reasons that both uh, Presidents Truman and Eisenhower recognized when they said, we can't hope to win the minds of men. I mean, we can't hope to win the so-called Cold War unless we yeah. win the minds of men. Well, I happen to be one who believes that we can progressively win the minds of men, but that it, it's extremely difficult. What we've got to do is what any intelligent, large American corporation or other organization does. Carry on an intelligent and somewhat expensive public relations program around well, the world. Well, Ed, can I shoot this question at you? The title of your book is Truth is Our Weapon. Do you think that in our propaganda campaign we ought to tell the whole truth, including some of the unpleasant things that might make a bad impression abroad, the whole story of the book-burning controversy, uh, some of the anti-foreign statements made by celebrities in this country? Should that all go abroad? In general, and unfortunately in a way, I think all of the important developments in this country should be reported abroad. I think we can afford to do it because the truth is on our side. 85% of the actual facts, I think, make us look pretty good. As a matter of fact, one of the troubles today is that the Europeans have an exaggerated impression of our so-called hysteria. Well, I think try truthful reporting of that sort of news and put it, putting it in perspective and reporting the other important news fully, that uh, we do more good than harm. Well, tell me this. If, if truth indeed is our weapon, to uh, coin a phrase from the Barrett book, <laughs> how do you explain the, the uh, spanking fact that uh, the Russians get so terribly far with falsehoods? Well, Ed, let's stop and look at that for a minute. I'm not sure they are getting so terribly far with Well, we, uh, I mean by that, that uh, we seem so constantly to be on the defensive. We're always explaining something after they've done something and, and accused us of something. Well, uh, we all have to answer misrepresentations in order to keep the record straight. But let's look for just a minute. The Russians have made short-term gains by falsehoods, along with a lot of intrigue and treachery and so on. They had their propaganda believed for a long period, but the surveys I've seen indicate that they are less and less believed around the world today. And they were never so overwhelmingly believed as we often give them credit for. Let's remember that I don't believe there's ever been a nation anywhere that has gone communist in a genuinely free national election. They have, by their lying propaganda, in the case of Korea, I think they've set themselves back. They've led uh, millions of people who once tended to believe them now to say, well, 
the Russian propaganda machine is basically a lying machine. Do you think they set themselves back by germ warfare propaganda? Uh, over the short term, no. That is an exception. Uh, I think over the long term, though, uh, even that is being less and less believed around the world. But you don't think that as a form of lying propaganda it's been very effective? I think it was on the short term. Except in one country, my favorite country of Southeast Asia, which I'd better not name, where the Russian germ warfare propaganda was not believed because the natives do not believe in germs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move, if we may for a minute, uh, to something more delicate, and that is the situation regarding uh, the information program uh, here at home. Uh, what I mean by that, what people think of it here at home. Just uh, very recently, as we've seen, the government has released some 2,000 employees from the information program. Uh, that's nearly a 25% cut in personnel. There has been a great deal of charges by Senator McCarthy and others uh, that there's been inefficiency and uh, uh, a lot of dead wood, uh, dangerous left-leaning, and uh, I'm afraid that uh, the allegations, at least, go back as far as your administration and farther. Can you give us yes, some Yes, there have been allegations that? of that sort all along. There has been some inefficiency in the program, as there is in any program of this nature where that involves trial and error. But the charges that have got the greatest headlines have been the most exaggerated charges. The results of the really careful investigations have not got many headlines. Let me just cite two cases. The most responsible job and the most thorough job done in the current Congress and the last Congress was done by the Hickenlooper Committee of the Senate, formerly the Fulbright Committee. They studied the program very, very carefully, abroad and at home. They found on the whole that it was doing an effective job. They found some things that very definitely ought to be modified or changed in their opinion, but on balance, they said it was doing a good job and should be continued at at least the level it was going on at then. Another such case was the Distinguished Committee of Private Citizens set up by Congress itself. That included Phil Reed, the chairman of the Board of General Electric, yeah. if you remember, <coughs> and Spike Canham, the president, former president of the American Society of Newspaper Editors. They studied it for five years. They said it was steadily improving, that there were, other, that there were still faults in it, it should be corrected, but that on balance it was doing a good job and should be increased. Well, Ed, whatever the uh, fine statements made by some of the committees, there seems to be no doubt now, from my observations both in Europe and since coming back to Washington, that the morale of personnel in the information program is at the moment pretty seriously impaired. Do you think that any effective propaganda progra pro program can be carried out by uh, personnel who at the moment feel, aside, aside from uh, the cuts in personnel, uh, personnel who have lost a great deal of morale because they feel they don't have support uh, from the top of the administration? No, I don't think an effective job can be done unless the employees feel that they are getting the support of their bosses and of their boss's boss. Well, we'll put I you... I hope for some steady improvement in that, by the way. Do you have any specific ground for that hope? Uh, only that I think the worst of the hysterical period is over, the worst of the Circus Act kind of investigation. And I even have hopes that we'll ultimately get around to where we have a continuing responsible system in Congress for handling this. Uh, that, you almost took the words out of my mouth uh, in reverse, so to speak. I was going to ask you, uh, putting you back in the driver's seat uh, for a moment, uh, what would you do to uh, improve the situation. The new administration has made a great many changes. It's, it's made the agency semi-independent and some other organizational changes. Have you got any further suggestions as to what you do? Well, first, I'm not going to let you put me back in the driver's seat right now. I had two years there, and I'm enjoying being a dr back seat driver at this moment. Yes, well, we'll leave you in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. There's one very important change that I would like to see made. If this field of international persuasion is as important as President Eisenhower indicates he believes it is, then it's worth a very special setup in the Congress, I think. Therefore, I would set up a special, joint, single committee of Congress with a good staff to work on this program continually, to cooperate with the administration, 
with a, oh, a minimum of fanfare and boisterous squabbling. Well, in other uh, words, uh, one committee that, to do continually what we've had all sorts of hit and run committees would that doing. Mean that, that Senator McCarthy years. wouldn't be allowed to investigate the information program anymore. Whoever's the, uh, whoever's the chairman of this committee should be the chairman of the only committee that isn't investigating in that. Not field. to put yes. you on a spot too much. You think Senator McCarthy would make a good chairman with all his wealth I of experience in the field? I personally definitely do not. A final, a final question, Mr. Barrett. Uh, there is obviously a communist menace. Uh, we're meeting it in one way or another. Uh, do you think that the present administration is doing enough to meet the menace of communist infiltration in government? I think the last administration did more than had ever been done before in that field. That the present administration has gone a little further. But I think probably the efforts in that direction should be increased. I think there should be less noise and less name calling in this field. And there should be systematic effort at tightening it up within the government, preferably by a high level commission appointed by the president. Thank you, Mr. Barrett, very much indeed. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Edward P. Morgan and Daniel Shore, both from the CBS Television News Staff. Our distinguished guest for this evening was the Honorable Edward W. Barrett, former Assistant Secretary of State. There are many, many watches which sell at prices equal to or higher than Longines. So if you wish to be sure of getting a watch of truly fine character, now what should you do? Well, just compare the facts you have about any other watch with the facts you have about Longines. And the facts about Longines prove it to be one of the finest of all the world's watches. For in competition with the world's best watches, Longines watches alone have won for excellence and elegance 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals. For accuracy, highest honors from the leading government observatories. For dependability, a position of leadership in sports, aviation, and in science. Yet, though Longines is one of the very finest watches made anywhere in all the world, a Longines watch is not excessively expensive because you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as 7150. And this is important. Whatever the price, every Longines watch is manufactured to the high standards of quality which have made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Longines, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines with Nor Watches. Returns this Sunday. You are there on the CBS television network.